to be a real beast, or he'd want to talk about it. He's probably going out with King Kong's sister. Yeah, what you mean, on top of the Empire State Building? <laughs> what? Now keep it up. When I come back, I'll bring you two monkeys a bunch of bananas. <laughs> the Brady Bunch aired from 1969 until 1974, but it remained on television in the form of reruns for decades. Even today on TV, they're the perfect family. Mike and Carol meet, get married, and Mike's sons, Greg, Peter, and Bobby, become siblings to Carol's daughters, Marsha, Jan, and Cindy. They all live in a house together with their housekeeper, Alice, and their dog, Tiger. Don't want to forget about him. They were a true American family. However, when the show ended, many of the deep secrets that they kept under wraps began to come out. Here are some of the Brady Bunch's biggest secrets you might not know about. Robert, Florence, and Barry's personal life issues. The Brady Bunch was America's favorite TV family. Its drama was just like what happens in a typical American family. So it was very relatable and became the comfort movie in the homes. But what the fans didn't know was that a picture from a popular blooper answered their questions regarding the family house's set. Get ready to find out. Before we get into that, how about we take a deep dive into some mysteries and clear the air about certain misconceptions you've about the show. To begin with, Carol and Mike fell in love, got married, and combined their existing families. Carol had three girls, while Mike had three boys. Now, with a family of eight, the Bradys learned to live together as one big blended family. Premiering in 1969 and ending after five seasons in 1974, each episode dealt with typical family issues of the 60s. But after 117 episodes, fans noticed that Mike often took charge with occasional speeches about integrity and trust. Sherwood Schwartz, the show's creator and executive producer, started planning the series by casting the children. He thought it would be easier if the kids' hair colors matched their TV parents. Since he didn't know who would play the parents yet, he aimed to find three blonde girls, three brunette girls, three brunette boys, and three blonde boys. The children's casting would depend on which actors were chosen for the parent roles. Schwartz mentioned that Susan Olsen won his heart during her first interview, and he thought Mike Lookinland was the best actor, even though he had blonde hair, which was a bit of a problem. Carol's role was initially intended for Joyce Boulafont, known for her role as Murray's wife on The Mary Tyler Moore Show. But after screen testing Florence Henderson, the creator, Sherwood Schwartz, felt she was perfect for the job. Similarly, Monty Margots was initially selected for the role of Alice, but Schwartz decided that a more comedic touch was needed, leading to the casting of Ann B. Davis. Originally, Schwartz envisioned Gene Hackman as Mike Brady, but Paramount expressed concerns about his lack of television experience and fame. Instead, Robert Reed, who had previously starred in The Defenders, tested for multiple TV roles for Paramount, with the Brady Bunch being his least preferred. Regardless, he was cast as the father figure. This paved the way for the casting of the blonde daughters, Marsha, Jan, and Cindy, and brunette sons, Greg, Peter, and Bobby. They were selected from over 1,200 kids, with Sherwood Schwartz personally interviewing 464 of them. The show had something particularly strange. Carol's previous marriage. In a 1969 scene from The Honeymoon, it's clear Mike's first wife had died, making him a widower. But Carol's first marriage was kept secret. Sherwood Schwartz said Carol was divorced from her first husband, but this wasn't mentioned on the show. Divorce was taboo for TV then, especially in a family-oriented series. Widowed parents were more acceptable, so making Mike a former widower and not discussing Carol's divorce was their safest choice. Since the sitcom started in September 1969, Reed wasn't happy with his role as Mike Brady. He thought acting in the often silly show was below his training as a serious Shakespearean actor. Producers and directors found him hard to work with both on and off set, but all of the cast got along well with him. In his attempts to add more realism to the sitcom, Reed often clashed with Schwartz. He regularly gave Schwartz handwritten notes explaining why certain motivations didn't make sense or why combining farce and satire was wrong. 
Schwartz mostly ignored Reed's suggestions, though he occasionally let Reed direct some episodes to ease tension. Schwartz simply didn't want to kick Reed off the set despite his frequent misbehavior in front of the children. In a 1983 interview, Reed admitted to often disagreeing with Schwartz, stating they always argued over the scripts. Despite his outbursts and stubborn behavior offset, Robert Reed was seen as the greatest TV dad of all time. He treated the Brady children well on TV, making him a role model and dream dad to many young viewers. Robert Reed was often described as challenging to work with on set. This could be because of his background as a classically trained actor. Before joining the cast of The Brady Bunch, Reed had received formal training at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts in London. His classical training instilled a deep understanding of acting techniques and a commitment to the craft. Having started his career with critically acclaimed roles, such as in the legal series The Defenders, Reed brought a level of professionalism and high standards to his work on The Brady Bunch. But his classical training and experience in more serious roles may have clashed with the lighthearted and sometimes campy nature of the sitcom. This clash could have led to tensions on set, as Reed may have had different expectations for the show's direction and character portrayal. As a classically trained actor, Reed may have approached his role as Mike Brady with a degree of seriousness and sophistication that clashed with the more lighthearted and comedic tone of the show. His training may have influenced his performance style and his interactions with the rest of the cast and crew. Reed's dedication to his craft may have also led him to challenge certain aspects of the show, such as the writing or character development, if he felt they did not meet his standards. Now let's turn the spotlight to Carol for a sec. What do you think is her story? Florence Henderson, who played Carol Brady on The Brady Bunch, had a humble upbringing. She was born on February 14, 1934, in Dale, Indiana, USA. Growing up, Florence was the youngest of 10 children in her family. Her parents, Elizabeth and Joseph, worked hard to provide for their large family, despite financial challenges. From a young age, Florence learned the value of hard work and perseverance from her parents. Despite their difficulties, they instilled in her a strong work ethic and a determination to succeed. As a child, Florence helped around the house and took on various responsibilities to contribute to the family. Despite their modest means, Florence's parents emphasized the importance of education. They encouraged her to excel in school and pursue her dreams. Florence showed promise academically and was determined to make the most of her opportunities. Growing up in a close-knit community, Florence developed strong bonds with her siblings and neighbors. They supported each other through thick and thin, forming lifelong friendships and cherished memories along the way. As Florence grew older, she pursued her passion for performing. She discovered her love for singing and acting at a young age and dreamed of one day becoming a professional performer. With the support of her family, she honed her talents and pursued opportunities to showcase her skills. Florence's upbringing instilled in her a sense of resilience and determination that would serve her well throughout her life. What we're about to reveal next might break your heart. While the show was airing, Florence Henderson experienced major challenges in her personal life, including battles with depression and divorce. Despite her public image as a beloved television mom, Florence struggled with her mental health and faced difficult times in her marriage. Florence's battle with depression was a deeply personal struggle that she met with courage and resilience. She encountered periods of sadness, hopelessness, and emotional turmoil. Depression can be a debilitating condition, affecting one's mood, thoughts, and daily functioning. As if that wasn't enough, Florence saw the early end of her marriage, which added to her emotional strain. Regardless of her challenges, Florence emerged from her struggles with newfound strength and resilience. Drawing from her own experiences, she embarked on a new path as a relationship therapist, using her personal journey to help others survive their own challenges in love and relationships. Florence's transition from actress to therapist demonstrated her commitment to helping others heal and find happiness in their lives. 
As a relationship therapist, Florence brought a unique perspective to her work, blending her personal experiences with her professional training to support her clients. Through her work as a therapist, Florence was able to channel her own struggles into a source of strength and inspiration for others. She understood firsthand the pain and difficulties that individuals face in their relationships, and she was dedicated to helping her clients find healing and fulfillment in their lives. Next, Greg. His personal was pretty rocky. See for yourself. Barry Williams, known for his role as Greg Brady on The Brady Bunch, faced several child support issues with his girlfriend, Elizabeth Kennedy. The couple's relationship was complicated, and disagreements over child support added further strain. Elizabeth, with whom Barry had a son named Brandon, sought financial support from Williams to provide for their child. The child support issues between Barry and Elizabeth started because of their differing perspectives on parenting and financial responsibility. Elizabeth believed that William should contribute more financially to support their son, while Barry may have felt that his contributions were sufficient. These disagreements led to legal battles and disputes over child support payments. As a public figure, Barry's child support issues with Elizabeth received a lot of attention from the media and the public. Sibling rivalry, shoplifting, and wild teenage hormones. Sibling rivalry is pretty common, especially when the sisters are close in age. In the Brady Bunch, Jan and Marcia had some serious sibling rivalry going on. Jan, the middle sister, often felt overshadowed by Marcia, the oldest. She thought Marcia got all the attention because of her looks and popularity. In one episode of the show, Jan's jealousy towards Marcia's looks became a big problem. Jan felt like she was always in Marcia's shadow and it made her really upset. This jealousy spilled into reality, causing tension between the actresses who played Jan and Marcia, Eve Plum and Maureen McCormick. Off screen, Eve Plum felt like she didn't get as much attention as Maureen McCormick, just like Jan felt about Marcia on the show. The tension between Eve Plum and Maureen McCormick off screen mirrored the rivalry between Jan and Marcia on screen. It wasn't just acting. There were real feelings involved. Eve Plum felt like she was constantly compared to Maureen McCormick, just like Jan felt compared to Marcia. This tension between the actresses affected their relationship on set and made things difficult for everyone involved. Sibling rivalry is tough, whether on a TV show or in real life. In The Brady Bunch, Jan and Marcia's rivalry was a central theme of the show, but it also had real-life consequences for the actresses who played them. Oh, it gets worse. Besides the sibling rivalry with Jan, Marcia McCormick had a shoplifting habit that caused big trouble for her and her friend Susan. Their shoplifting escapades often led to risky situations and consequences. Marcia and Susan's friendship was eventually put to the test one particular day as they engaged in the illegal activity together, putting themselves in danger of getting caught. The shoplifting habit started innocently enough with Marcia and Susan succumbing to temptation and stealing items from stores. In an interview later, Marcia said she only did it because she loved the adrenaline rush. She had a lot of money and could always afford the little things they stole, but as they continued to engage in this behavior, it became increasingly risky and problematic. Their actions not only put them at risk of legal trouble, but also strained their friendship and caused guilt and remorse. Despite the dangers and potential consequences, Marcia and Susan found it difficult to break free from their shoplifting habit. The thrill of getting away with stealing items provided a temporary high, but it ultimately led to feelings of guilt and shame. Marcia struggled with the moral implications of her actions and their impact on her relationships and reputation. The turning point came when Susan was caught shoplifting, ending their illicit activities. The experience was a wake-up call for Marcia, forcing her to confront the consequences of her actions and reconsider her behavior. Witnessing the fallout from Susan's arrest made Marcia realize the seriousness of their actions and the need to change course. After Susan's arrest, Marcia consciously decided to stop shoplifting and turn her life around. The experience was a valuable lesson for her, teaching her the importance of honesty, integrity, and personal responsibility. Marcia's decision to break free from her shoplifting habit marked a significant turning point in her life. 
allowing her to move forward with a renewed sense of purpose and direction. Now, did you know there was one particular forbidden romantic feeling on the set? Amidst raging teenage hormones, Barry Williams, who played Greg Brady on The Brady Bunch, had a massive crush on Florence Henderson, who portrayed Carol Brady, the mother figure on the show. Barry developed these feelings during the filming of the series, as he spent a considerable amount of time working closely with Florence on set. His admiration for her grew as he observed her professionalism, warmth, and talent. Barry's crush on Florence was obvious in his interactions with her both on and off screen. He admired her beauty, grace, and charisma, and he often found himself drawn to her presence. Despite their age difference, Barry couldn't help but feel infatuated with Florence. Throughout the filming of The Brady Bunch, Barry harbored his feelings for Florence, keeping them to himself. But his affection for her occasionally surfaced in subtle ways, such as through compliments or lingering gazes. Florence told interviewers that she would never be romantically invited with him as she saw him as her son, off screen and on set. She even said it wasn't the fact that she was married that made her respect their familial relationship, as she was already going through natural issues. Fans also noticed that Greg Brady, portrayed by Barry Williams, had numerous girlfriends throughout the series, but not one kiss on the show. Even with his many romantic entanglements, Greg never shared an on-screen kiss with any of his love interests. This unique aspect of the show became a popular characteristic of Greg's character, distinguishing him from typical teenage boys shown on television at the time. In the series, Greg's girlfriends included Rachel, Kathy, and Marcia's friend Karen. The absence of on-screen kisses for Greg may have been due to the conservative nature of television programming when The Brady Bunch aired. The show aimed to portray wholesome family values and maintain a sense of innocence, particularly in its portrayal of teenage relationships. As a result, physical displays of affection such as kissing were often omitted or implied rather than shown explicitly on screen. There was one exception though, Bobby Brady, the youngest son in the Brady Bunch. He got a kiss in the The Not-So-Ugly Duckling episode aired during the show's third season. His first kiss was from Millicent, a girl he met at a party, sharing a bed, low ratings, and the blooper. Contrary to popular belief, the Brady family from the Brady Bunch wasn't actually the first TV couple to share a bed on screen. While many people think they were the first in this regard because sharing a bed was a TV taboo at the time, it's not true. The first TV couple to share a bed was Mary Kay and Johnny. They pioneered breaking this television taboo long before the Bradys came along. This misconception highlights how historical facts can sometimes get overshadowed by popular perception. The Brady Bunch initially faced struggles and low ratings before achieving widespread popularity. Despite its eventual success, the show struggled to find its audience during its initial run. The concept of a blended family was relatively new for television then, and some viewers found it difficult to relate to the show's premise. Additionally, the early episodes lacked the iconic elements that later became synonymous with the series. But as the show continued to air and audiences became more familiar with the characters and storylines, the Brady Bunch gradually gained popularity. It wasn't until after its original airing that the show found its place in pop culture, becoming a beloved classic that resonates with audiences today. Now to the main point, the blooper. In many episodes of The Brady Bunch, you might notice several scenes in the bathroom, but if you pay close attention, you'll realize that there's never a toilet in sight. This might seem odd, but it was a deliberate decision made by the network. The network executives believed that showing a toilet on television would violate certain regulations and standards of decency. So even though the Brady family's bathroom looked realistic in many ways, the absence of a toilet was a peculiar detail that viewers eventually picked up on. I mean, take a look at this photo that is not edited. Look closely at the Brady Bunch blooper. There's literally no toilet. As the Brady Bunch progressed, the show's ratings declined, leaving producers searching for a way to reignite viewer interest. One factor contributing to this decline was the absence of a cute child character 
to capture the audience's attention. Susan Olsen and Mike Lookinland, who played Cindy and Bobby Brady, were growing older, and their characters were no longer the adorable kids viewers had initially fallen in love with. To remedy this, the show introduced a new character, Cousin Oliver, to inject some youthful charm back into the series. But adding Cousin Oliver did little to reverse the show's declining ratings. In fact, the term Cousin Oliver has since become synonymous with introducing a new character in a desperate attempt to save a failing show. Unfortunately, this strategy often backfires, as audiences can see through the transparent ploy and may even resent the new character for disrupting the flow they've grown accustomed to. While Cousin Oliver may have provided a brief boost in curiosity and novelty, it was not enough to sustain the show's popularity in the long run. Now that you know this fact about the show, and of course the many others we've revealed, did you notice it at first glance? We would also love to know your favorite episodes and characters. We're honestly finding it hard to choose. Share yours with us in the comments.